When you want to study how something rotates or spins, you need to look at two things. First, you need to draw an axis that the object rotates around. This axis represents the line of particles in the object that stay stationary. A particle that sits far from the axis moves more quickly during the rotation, but a particle that sits close to the axis moves more slowly during the rotation. But every particle completes each revolution at the same rate, which brings us to the second thing you need to look at, the rotational velocity. The rotational velocity can be measured in two ways, revolutions per second and radians per second. Revolutions per second is fairly straightforward. It's the number of full rotations the object completes each second. You can think of this number as being like a rotational frequency. We can also measure rotational velocity in units of radians per second using the relationship that there are two pi radians in every revolution. Radians per second is a useful unit because if you multiply the radians per second times a particle's distance from the axis, you can find the linear velocity of that particle measured in meters per second. We'll use this relationship when we discuss rolling motion. For now though, we need rotational velocity measured in radians per second so that we can multiply by a small time step to find out how much angle the object rotates by. We also want to look at cases where the rotational velocity changes. This process is controlled by the object's rotational acceleration. Just like when we worked with regular acceleration, rotational acceleration can be multiplied by our time step to find out how much the rotational velocity changes by. This code creates an object and rotates it based on rotational acceleration and rotational velocity. First, we create a set of atoms that make up the shape we want. For now, we'll create a ring, which means that every atom sits at the same distance from the rotation axis. VPython allows us to combine these atoms into a single shape using the compound command. For more about the compound command, see the link in the description below. Next, we draw the rotation axis. In this case, our rotation axis is the x-axis. We'll also recolor one of the atoms so that we can follow a single point on the ring more easily. Then begins the rotation. We set the initial rotational velocity to zero and give a constant value to the rotational acceleration. Notice that both of these are vectors that point in the direction of the axis of rotation. Then we enter the animation loop. First, we update the rotational velocity, just like we update regular velocity by using the time step. Then we rotate the ring using vPython's rotate command. The shape will rotate by an angle given by the rotational velocity multiplied by the time step. And the shape will rotate around the axis given by the rotational velocity vector. To learn more about the rotate function, see the link in the description below. When we run the code, we see that the ring starts out stationary and begins to rotate with an increasing speed. You can also see how the ring is rotating around the x-axis. If we change the rotation axis to the y-axis, we see how the rotation changes. It still speeds up, but now it's spinning around the vertical axis instead of tumbling over the horizontal axis. And of course, we can rotate the ring around the z-axis as well, making it turn like a wheel. We can also give the ring an initial rotational velocity in the negative direction, which means the ring will initially slow down and then speed up in the opposite direction.
You have now learned how to model rotations using vPython. Follow the link in the description below to learn more about rotational motion.